Hi everybody, welcome to another Chats with Children. I hope you're safe and well. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Mary Ann Brown, who's the Executive Director of Conferences at Cambridge Health Tech Institute and also the team lead at Pep Talk. In fact, an event that she started with three meetings 21 years ago. And not surprisingly, that's exactly what we're about to talk about. We're going to be talking about Pep Talk 2022, which is going to be held in San Diego from January the 17th to the 19th. So Mary Ann is here to give me a quick preview of the event. So Mary Ann, first of all, how are you? I am doing very well. Uh, a little cold here today in Boston, and I am looking forward to some sun and science at San Diego. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Now, before we start talking about Pep Talk and so on, how's the year been for you so far? It, it has been a year of learning. I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, in the conference events business, uh, we have had to do a lot of uh, learning on the fly and learning a lot of new technologies. I uh, never thought two years ago, um, Zoom and everything else would be a, a daily part of my life, but uh, it, it's great that it's there because it does bring everybody together. So um, I guess that's the thing. It's just been a year of learning experience. Yeah, well, it's been quite a year of flux, especially for event organizers, I know. And I know that um, there was virtual events at the beginning of the year, but it became more hybrid. And you actually had your first live events, I think. Was it September onwards you started to have live events as well? Uh, correct. And each one, uh, we learned a little bit more and we're making them uh, better as we go for both the in-person uh, participants, as well as the remote participants, because we understand that everyone can't attend that way. Brilliant, okay, well, uh, let's talk about Pep Talk. So okay. before we talk about this year's events, for those not familiar with Pep Talk, could you give us a quick background on the actual event as well? And what makes it unique okay. compared to other events in a similar space? Okay, well, Pep Talk, is I'm saying is our 20 plus one year anniversary this year. Uh, we celebrated the 20th anniversary last year virtually. So we're doing 20 plus one this year as we're uh, gathering everybody back in person. However, I will say that uh, for the first time, uh, we're proud to announce that Pep Talk is a hybrid event. So you can attend either in person or remotely. Uh, but uh, we'd like to say that it is a way to, two ways to attend, but one shared experience. And what makes Pep Talk uh, unique is uh, it is a blend of both uh, research, upstream research, discovery research in the biotherapeutics area, but then we also take it further on downstream to bring in some of the bioproduction bio angles uh, for the event. I've always felt that it was very important to bring these two communities together instead of being siloed because a biotherapeutics, especially as we've learned, learned over this past year, two years, is critical uh, for our health. Right. Okay. So, I mean, you mentioned biotherapeutics there, and obviously uh, there's a lot of new uh, therapies out there now and a lot of new development. So uh, as someone who actually organizes this event and obviously has the call for papers and organizes all the speakers, what key trends have you seen emerge over the last two years or 12 months, let's say, and what's likely to be discussed at the event in January? I think the, uh, while I'm going to go two different directions, uh, I think over the past two years, uh, the community has learned that rapid response is required. So there's been a lot of, again, creativity around uh, even uh, the labs and getting together and how you actually do the research you need to do. And uh, I have been saying all along that I really want to thank the bioscience and bioproduction community for all the hard work they put in for the last couple of years. Sure. But we do have, I mentioned that we have both the upstream uh, research and discovery as well as the further downstream uh, bioproduction. So uh, Pep Talk is centered around pipelines. So we have pipelines on antibody discovery and engineering protein and antibody therapeutics, characterization and aggregation in biopharmaceuticals, 
cell and gene therapy, biotherapeutic expression and production, and protein production and higher throughput. And as you can see, they're woven together with both discovery and then the day-to-day, -day, um, I don't know what to say, what to say just day-to-day -day getting down and the hard work of actually making it happen. Fantastic. Now, and how is the actual event structured? Because I know you've got a number of different tracks. So if you're registering for the event, whether it's live or virtual, how is it structured so for delegates in terms of getting information? Okay, uh, well, with those six pipelines, we're over three days and we have over 150 speakers and uh, over 150 of those speakers are from large pharma. And the way the meeting is structured is uh, you can attend, we like to say, you can create the conference of your choice. Uh, you can take a look at all the presentations and if you're on site, you can move back and forth between session rooms and experience the talks that you want to hear. Um, for the remote attendees, they too can walk right along and attend in real time and hear those presentations and take part just like, almost like they were there in person and ask, ask questions of the speakers, et cetera. The good part about the meeting is, is because uh, we are, do have created a platform, uh, Pathable, and everything that will be on demand later on. So I know that we get this feedback all the time. I wanted to attend two talks at the same time, Marianne. Oh. I, I didn't like to choose. Well, now you'll get to go back and have uh, access to those uh, presentations on demand later on. So it'll be a full experience for everyone. Just to have interest, you know, you mentioned the on-demand part. Do many people go back and uh, download and view the on-demand versions of the presentations after the conference? They, they do. They, uh, they do. Uh, that uh, we're surprised. It, it's a great resource. I mean, it, it's going to be up four months later on. So you may, and even those presentations you heard live, and you maybe miss something, you can go back and listen to it again. So it's a great resource for every, for the community. Right, brilliant. And what else can uh, delegates do if they're attending live? Obviously it's a bit different if you're, if you're attending virtual, but uh, live in San Diego, what else are you doing for the delegates? What else can they look forward to in San Diego, apart from hopefully the sun and the sand? Sun in the sand in science. I like that one. Uh, we uh, really uh, strive to uh, bring the uh, community together. So we've got a lot of different events taking place uh, around networking and uh, One of the things are uh, the ever popular buzz sessions. And these are facilitated networking discussion groups around a central topic. And we do have experts there to host the discussion group, but uh, everybody gets to gather literally around a round table, grab a cup of coffee and problem solve. And uh, these uh, uh, have been noted year after year after year, one of the best ways to uh, create and uh, facilitate and uh, have new colleagues uh, that have a similar interest. Uh, along, we have posters at the exhibit hall and uh, poster sessions have always been very popular. And of course, we have 58 exhibitors in the exhibit hall. Their technology and their resources and their expertise is very valuable. And then we have uh, something that we started two years ago when we were in person is the Pep Talk Plaza. And uh, this is a sort of a central meeting place to gather. Uh, we'll have meetups. Uh, we have one around uh, women in science. We have another one on Discover San Diego. We're gonna do speed networking. And of course there is uh, via the uh, platform uh, Pathable, one-on-one -on -one, uh, networking and matchmaking by AI. So we're really working on bringing that community together you know, whether you're in person or remote, 
But guess what? It's, as I said before, it's, it's uh, two ways to attend, but it's one shared experience. Fantastic. Well, I've, you just reminded me of you holding up a big banner, actually. Yes. When I saw you last in San Diego, uh, standing in the middle of that zone, actually, asking people to come along for the next meeting. I still remember that. Yes. So there yes. you go. That well, you'll see me again walking around with those banners. I don't know. I just find that's the best way to, yeah, to <laughs> capture people's attention. Yeah, well, it certainly is. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, well, hopefully I can go, but we shall see what happens with Omicron here in the UK and the travel restrictions etc yep. but well look, that sounds really exciting is there anything else like else you'd like to tell viewers about the event before we wrap up well i just want to say that we know that it is sort of a uh questionable time about traveling but i wanted to assure everyone that we do have policies and procedures uh in place to uh, make it as safe as possible if you're attending in person mm -hmm. Uh, you can uh, check out our website to find out what those are, but uh, we will be following all of the local regulations and uh, require that everyone uh, has proof of vaccinations before they attend on site. So I'm going to be there and, uh, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic. Well, look, I really wish you a fantastic event and hopefully you never know, I might actually be able to go depending I, on what happens with travel restrictions. And I know, so. yeah, we shall, it's, we, it, we know, shall it's, see. It's, we shall see. I plan on seeing you there and we can do one of our, our speed interviews uh, on site. <laughs> I would look forward to doing that, actually, if we can. So, uh, Miriam, um, happy build up. I mean, I know you must be busy leading up to Christmas anyway. I mean, getting everything ready for the show for when you get back from your little break. And so good luck with the build up. Uh, hopefully it'll be a fantastic and smooth build up to the event and i hope you have a fantastic event as well and hopefully i can get to see you there in person oh so. i hope so too rizwan i i you uh, i just enjoy your uh questions and your smile and your <laughs> we want you at the exhibit hall well i'd love to be there well there you go for you. now one final question if people want to register for the event and find out more where can they go to I would uh, just head, uh, have you head over to uh, the pep talk, um, uh, just uh, put uh, pep talk, actually I used pep talk 2022 San Diego and it'll take you right to the homepage and registration information is there. Brilliant. Well, I'll put the link obviously above this okay, video so people can much. actually click on that as well so they don't have to search too hard for it. So yeah, as I say, so Good luck with the event. And there you go, viewers. If you'd like to know more about Pep Talk 22, hopefully this has whetted your interest, then find out more by going to the website and you'll have all the details there about all the different tracks, the speakers and so on. There's a lot of speakers there, so we didn't really highlight anyone. We didn't want to miss anybody out. But there's uh, uh, over 150 there. So you, uh, find out who the speakers are, see what the different talks on the different tracks are. It's easy to register as well. And if you've got any questions, then you can ask questions from the website or you can message Marianne. She's on LinkedIn. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any questions as well. So all that's something we say is, Marianne, uh, have a wonderful, happy, healthy, festive season and new year and happy build up. And viewers, same to you. I hope you have a wonderful festive break, a great start to 2022. And until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye.